Hey everybody, good evening. Uh, tonight's show is a little bit different. Obviously, uh, the news of today is so horrendous that it would seem uh, insensitive at best to say it's a great day for America. Um, so I, I, won't, I won't be starting the show with that tonight. Um, I, uh, I, is anyone else sick of the I seem to have to uh, say that too often. I have to, you know, not say it's a great day for America for some a random act of, of, of madness or terrorism or... Uh, it, anyway, it, it's the way it is. And, and the trouble is, of course, uh, by the time you get to this show, uh, you know, 12.30 in your region or wherever, the... the uh, oh, uh, uh, Craig, is it okay to laugh? Yes, it's okay to laugh. But it, the thing is, by the time you get to this, the show, you know, the media has been pouring over the events of the day. Uh, there's constant analysis and speculation on the assumptions that uh, people don't. And I'm not, I'm not here to do that. I under, you know, people say to me, Craig, your job is to make people laugh at the end of the day. And I think, yes, that's true. Uh, but I've never professed to be any damn good at that. And, <laughs> and the thing is that, you know, people, people want their mind taken off it. And I think, well, okay, if you want your mind taken off it, you know, watch a cartoon or a video or something. I understand it. It's perfectly acceptable. It's not a... It's, it, I don't, you know, I don't think it's a terrible thing to not want to think about it. But I, I can't not think about it. You know, I can't not think about it. You know, the deal I made with you when I, when I started this show was that, you know, I'll be as honest as I can be. So I have to be honest. Well, we'll do the best show we can do. We'll, we'll have some laughs. We'll do it. You know, we'll do what we do. But uh, to a degree, but I this is this is on my mind. I can't pretend it's not there. I'm not. I, I'm not one of those people. I'm not a valuable quality entertainer. <laughs> and also, you know, I have a I have a personal connection uh, with the city of Boston. Uh, I uh, I have some history there. I have family there. Uh, I uh, when I became an American citizen in 2008. I spoke at Faneuil Hall on July 4th at the invitation of uh, Tommy Menino, who is the mayor of Boston and uh, one of the more colorful characters in, uh, in American politics. Who would have thought the city of Boston would rise up with an interesting and colorful politician? But it happens from time to time. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the city of Boston, you know, I, I, I've been there on the 4th of July many times on the... Uh, uh, the Esplanade there with that big half shell or clam shell, or I always get it wrong, but you know, with the, I've done that a lot, and every cop in Boston looks like I'm his brother. <laughs> you know that's true. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, 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 my first stand-up special in America, I shot it in Boston. I, I'm used to, uh, I like that town. I, 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 I'm, I'm appalled. Uh, the, by this this thing, you know, and, and when I watch it on these, you know, on these streets that I know, you know, you watch the, the media going over and over this thing on the streets, that you know, it's horrifying, you know, and people say, oh, you don't let the terrorists win. They're not, they're not winning. I just, it's there. It's there. And I know people say, oh, we don't know if it's a terrorist. Yes, we do. Whoever did that, whoever did that thing wasn't doing it for any other reason, I mean, clearly they uh, failed in achieving the number of deaths and carnage that they were trying to get. You know, this wasn't some brave commando that snuck into a military installation and put a limpet mine on a, the side of a battleship and then snuck out, you know, fearing for his own life. This was some <laughs> that went into a public place and left something there that he knew was going to blow up. That's not a soldier. That's a terrorist. That's not a soldier, you know? So, you know, if, if I can't, if I, if I have all this inside of me, you know, if I have all this rage and anger and uh, distress and upset inside of me, I'm not good enough a comedian to hide that from you. I can't hide it from you. It's there. So we'll have uh, our guests out tonight and I'll ask them about their lives. <laughs> but wait, <laughs> I don't know how it's going to be. <laughs> Luckily, we have uh, a couple of guys tonight who I think, it, it, you know, we, we got a shot. Uh, they're intelligent, uh, uh, experienced, clever men. Rob Lowe and Larry King are my guests tonight. I think we'll be all right. Uh, join us after.
after a break and we'll carry on. All right. talented actor. He is the narrator of the miniseries The 80s, The Decade That Made Us. Go to rehab. Airing <laughs> on the... Made me go to rehab anyway. <laughs> it's airing on the National Geographic Channel. Please welcome the great Rob Lowe, everybody. That's all of our prepared bits. Yeah, that that's, torn up that's right now. everything gone, Rob. <laughs> Just like the 80s, it disappeared. There's now. nothing left in, in either of our brains. I'm now. surprised that, uh, that you're doing a documentary about the 80s, given that I, I kind of think of you as being one of the people that participated it, a great deal. You, you, don't need, the, you, don't, you don't need to flatter me. You, you know that I'm one of the people that can't remember much about Well, the that's kind of what I was thinking. That if, okay. if you're doing a documentary about something, wouldn't it be best to know about that? Did you have people, researchers, look into your life at that time because yeah. I got a great video you should see buddy <laughs> I did I, I had I brought out my my diary and I said these months I was blacked out yeah so please can you have some research no it, it's, it's no. not a personal perspective of this it's a documentary right you're you're it, it is it, right. it's and it's really sort of I find it to be actually sort of moving because so much of what we take for granted today was brand new or didn't even exist in the 80s, from, from cell phones to home gaming to, you know, texting, the, internet, the way we live our lives on a daily basis was... I great. remember those cell phones the from bricks, the 80s, the big, big, big giant things, yeah. yeah it wasn't really a giants. portable phone, it was kind of like... <laughs> if something be portable, it should be easy to move around, no, I there's, think. We have this great clip of, of Gordon Gecko. Touch my knee, touch my knee. There you go, baby. <laughs> yeah. You liking that? Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, no, it's kind of nice, actually. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. you Rob Lowe, help yourself. So, uh, no, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm fascinated by this period in history because I have trouble remembering parts of it myself. Well, it's like, you know, to me, the greatest... People talk about the 80s and what changed history, and people talk about the fall of the Berlin Wall or the invention that's of the... That's done? But See, that's... I missed that as well. <laughs> to me, the single greatest invention of the 80s, hair mousse. Well, yeah. At, I, least, I, at least for me. Are you, are you wearing a, a hair product right now? Oh, no, I'm all natural. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I, I, mean, really. I thought you were just surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, it looks good. Your hair looks great. Well, man. thank you. Yeah, no, yeah, it's really it's good. Yeah. I think we're the only two people that come through the 80s with our hair intact. I know. No, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if mine's in time. Mine's gray, though, man. No, you, you, it makes you very distinguished. You're See, I don't want to be distinguished. Don't want to be distinguished. No, no, no. no just, I don't want to be distinguished. Thank you, though, for making me distinguished. No, you got a, you got a, like a Clooney thing without the Darth. Oh, oh, Clooney, my yeah. ass! Come on. <laughs> don't have a Clooney thing going on. <laughs> Late night talk show douche. I don't have a Clooney. <laughs> Where's my Italian thing that he has? What does he have? A villa in somewhere. Have you been there? I bet you have. I, I have not. I have not been to the the, the famous villa yet. But oh, maybe right. after tonight, I'll get get an. Oh yeah, because George is watching right yeah. now. <laughs> no, he's like I never miss Craig. He's got a me thing going on. <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, the terrible uh, news coming out of Boston today. You've been following that stuff today? I, I have been, and, and like you, I, I love that city. I've, I've shot there, and, and I have friends there, and Amy Poehler, who's on Parks and Rec, right. is, is from Boston, so I, I have an affinity, and it's, it's been horrible. A lot of people in the comedy world from, uh, from Boston. Louis C.K. Yeah, 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 and uh, uh, Dennis Leary, he's yeah. from Boston as well. There's a lot of that. I, Dennis Leary's another one. I, I met Dennis in the 80s. You, but you remember, you, wait, you remember meeting Dennis Leary in the 80s? Well, we had similar interests, let's just say that. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I hear you, I hear you loud and clear, pal. <laughs> but the thing about Dennis is he never really went that crazy. He, he, he sort of was, had an image of being a crazy man, but he wasn't really. You, on the other hand, stories are abound that you were actually completely crazy. I, uh... I, I put a lot of those in my book that I wrote last year, and yeah. uh, here's, look, the way I look at it is, is 
you want to do that stuff when you're young. I mean, and if you, you have to, to, then you might as everybody well. Everybody has to. Come on, wait, oh, wait, 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 what age are your kids now? Uh, I have a freshman in college and, and I have a junior in high school. Wow, see, that's, uh, that's... So they're, listen... That's the danger yeah, years, yeah. That is. Yeah, I, I, mine are a little younger than that. I had to wait a little longer to have my kids. <laughs> I was like, uh, what? Oh, it, no kids! Oh my God, look at the time! Let's go! Yeah. As far as you know... Oh, don't even start with that. <laughs> Is anyone ever... No, I can't ask you that. Is that true? What? No, I, I no. managed to escape that one somehow. Yeah. Um, but no, the, all, of the, all of the craziness that, that, that we all did right. helps, you know, form who we are now. I mean, I'm sober well, now yeah. 23 years. Wow, so, that's sensational. Uh, that's, 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 that is great. That is great. But, um, and I wouldn't, so you, I wouldn't go, ba I wouldn't go now, back. And, I wouldn't go back and change a thing. Well, but I wouldn't change you know, People one always thing. say to me now, though, what do you do now if you don't drink or you know go crazy? <laughs> but what, what do you do? I mean, I do this. I, you know, it fills my day. But and, what about you? And, 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 and this is crazy. Let me tell you. This no, is this is not crazy. crazy. This is this is sedate tonight. I'm what dialing is? it back a bit. Okay, tonight. all right. Yeah, all right. Yeah, but um, it's you know, what do you do? How do you relax? How do you unwind? Well, that is the thing. I do have to, to find ways to let that crazy part of me out because I think that's, that's part of what makes me who I am. So, you know, I, I, I surf, a big wave surf. I, big I, wave surf? Like North Shore Hawaii big I, wave? I've surfed on the North Shore, but uh, if it gets really big, I don't go out. But, right. But, you know. And, that's uh, pretty I rode crazy. a jet pack last week. Uh, one of those crazy, like, Jetsons, 1960s. We thought we were all going to have one when yeah. we got older. We, of course, none of us have them. Well, I you've found got one, one clearly. I, I yeah. <laughs> So uh, like you turn up at Parks and Rec in your jet pack? <laughs> Hi, other people who are not Rob Lowe. That must be good. Um, it was a one-time only thing, but it was fun. But I, I got to find stuff that... that Do you I get... Are you kind of an adrenaline junkie yeah, then? You're kind of like uh, fast cars, airplanes, that kind of thing? Uh, yeah. I, I'm so bad with math, though, that I don't want to be in a, like, responsible in a cockpit. Like, how much gas ra ratio of flight time was that? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> they got computers for all of that now. Mm. It? Yeah, no, it just goes like that. Hey, more gas. Mm. <laughs> Better stop for gas. <laughs> Or something like that. I have a pilot's license. I really do. You really? Know. Yeah, I do. Yeah, really? I, I have a similar problem to you. I kind of have to yeah. be engaged or else, um, you know, it's like Sherlock Holmes. You yeah. know in the Sherlock Holmes stories where he, he gets depressed if there's no case and stays at home and shoots intravenous cocaine? That's me. I, 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 I hear your pain. Yeah, it's kind of like that. I hear your pain. With, well, with that upbeat note, we'll take a commercial <laughs> break. We'll be right back with Rob Lowe. Why is lining up the right colors of this cube so insanely difficult? The reason? There's only one correct answer. And more than 43 billion billion wrong ones. But then a rebellious 12-year-old decides to take matters into his own hand. He cheats. I had a look inside to see how it worked. Patrick sees that the six centerpieces are connected. I now knew that I was able to solve it. And if you start with the corners, everything else eventually will line up. Now wait. Welcome back. I'm here with Rob Lowe. We're talking about the Rubik's Cube now. In fact, I've decided right now. Right now. Yeah, because I know that about the Rubik's Cube and I can't do it. Can you do it? Well, the kid that we just saw on the clip then became the youngest uh, New York Times bestseller in history because he published his secret in a book and sold like a million five copies because up until then people really absolutely could not solve that, that game. Couldn't do it. I can't remember that part of it at all. Well, can you imagine yeah. us trying to do it? Yeah, I'd go into it like, oh, you know, <laughs> Yeah, oh, great. And the thing is, though, I'm such a horrible jerk that, like, if someone solves it, I'm like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my kids. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 
I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, I don't believe you. But no, I, I, I get. A, I'm a little bit like that with jugglers as well. You don't like jugglers. It's not that I don't like them. It's just like when they see them do juggling, I'm like, oh, oh great. <laughs> I you like jugglers? There's a whole area of entertainment that that, that I go. I, I don't. I don't get why I should. Yeah. Like why that. do I have to like I, this? I don't like mimes. I don't no. like jugglers. You... Say something. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, if there, if it's that difficult to open the door, call call a, a joiner or something. Call a, a, a carpenter. Do something. Well, listen. Also, how hard is it to open <laughs> invisible door? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I knew we were going to get along. I mean. <laughs> It's unbelievable. People just wasting their time, Rob. Wasting our time. I know. I know. Yeah. So true. We should, can we hang out? Yeah, let's do it. Nah, let's go have a bad. drink. No, that'd no, be bad. Are. No, no. If, do you ever toy with the idea? Never. Really? Never. I do sometimes. Do you really? Sometimes, You yeah. do not. That's a lie. A little bit. How many years are you now? 21. Sick. That's, that's impossible. Really? Still? Wait a minute. Well, what, what's, what's happening? No, no. Oh! No. 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 No, no, trust me, no. you'd know. You know, yeah, I mean... Uh, it, would I? Oh, you know, it'd be obvious. Okay, I'll Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> First of all, I wouldn't be here, so... <laughs> I'd be elsewhere. They'd be like, where is he? I, I, that would be a clue. Right, right. Um, <laughs> no, I don't... I kind of... You know what I do miss is cigarettes. Yeah. Did you ever smoke cigarettes? I didn't. I, oh, I, 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 I will have a cigar from, from time to time, and, and really what I do way too much of is um, caffeine, which then became espresso. And so that's a I lot like of that. all of that. Though well, that's all right. And I mean, isn't there's a result came out? Uh, I just made up that is good for you. Oh, good. I'm no, it, it, it is good for you. Doctor Ferguson kind of, says it's yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, are you in therapy? Therapy's awesome. Have you done that? I, I'm I'm actually a big believer in that. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I I really like it. No, it really squared me right up. I'm good. Me too. It's like it's, it, it's like going to uh, you know a mental chiropractor. You tried chiropractic? <laughs> I have, I have, I have tried that. I didn't care for that no? much. No? Nah. You thought it was <laughs> right? Kinda, yeah. <laughs> well, you didn't? I sort of did. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Do you know what I thought was really good was mm. acupuncture. Do you do that? That is amazing. That's that awesome. Energy. You're like, ah! Yeah! What? what? Oh my God! Yeah! Yeah, it's, uh, that's... I works. like things that make me go like that. <laughs> And there is the root of the problem it is, it right is. there. It is. Yeah, no. <laughs> but it's nice to be, you know, retired from all of that now, sort of. <laughs> I like the the enigmatic. Nah, I'm kidding. Sorta. I'm kidding. No, listen, I'm not an idiot. If it was more fun to drink and use drugs, I'd still do it. Me too. You know? That's what I, I mean, tell. I actually do tell people that because yeah. I, I I speak around the country sometimes to to adolescents who are, who it's always going to be an issue for them because sure. they're they're meant to experiment. They're meant to learn their relationship with it, and they, that's part of what they need to do in life. Right. And I tell them that if if I could have the kind of fun that I had then now, I'd still do it, without sure, a question. Absolutely. But, but it doesn't work in my life, and for many of them, it will stop working for them too. Yeah. And they just need to know when that is, and then make the right call. Yeah, I mean, it stopped working for me about five years before I quit. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. No, yeah. I mean, it took that long for me to go, wait, maybe my sucky life is connected to this. <laughs> right, uh, right. Maybe it's not just a bunch of... I used to think, you know, I, you would drink too if you had my problems. Right. No, they call that terminal uniqueness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a Very good Very damn near was as well. Right, right. So, there you are. Ah, good. So, hmm. The 80s. We have to talk about the 80s. Oh, you did the documentary? Oh, that, that was it? You didn't That's all I'm getting? Yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, Ruby's Cube. What else then about the 80s? <laughs> See, we ever in New York in the 80s? You must have been. Again, not that I can remember. Oh, you must have no. been. That's where yeah. I was. I was in the uh, Lower East Side, East Village, kind of, in yeah. the 80s. A club I, called Save the Robots. Oh, yeah, Save the Robots. You yeah, were I, in there I, one I was, night. I was at Save the yeah, Robots. Yeah, because I was a doorman. No, you were I not. Just, you yes, were I was. And that's yeah, I was. What? I was. I was the doorman at Save the Robots, and I just remembered that you were in one night, and it was a big deal. That, that, well, that was the late night club we would go to the after very, everything else closed. We didn't open until 4. 4, I yeah. remember that. And you know, we were doing a lot of espresso. Oh, yeah, a lot of that. It was that powdered espresso <laughs> that people oh were doing God. at the time. That is saved. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You're, I remember. You are now my new favorite, like, hero. <laughs> ever. No, the thing is about being the doorman that saved the robots, you don't have to do anything. Who was the biggest <laughs> that ever came in to save the robots? I can't tell you. Oh, come on. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, you'd had a few drinks. It's all right. We all make mistakes. No, I was a big tipper. That's no, impossible. no, no. You were fine. You yeah. Were fine. I, 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 no, I just remember you were in there. There was an actor who I can't remember his name, but I'll tell you during the commercial okay, break. Okay, great, 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 great. Uh, <laughs> Who was just, what a tool. Oh, my God. You must have seen every, that was the, the place to be. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. I, I got fired pretty early on, though. Why? I wasn't interested in working the door. <laughs> Everything was going on inside. Yeah. Anyway, we're out of time. Uh, that was it? Yeah, yeah. You good? I'm good, man. This is great. Thank you. Little awkward pause before you leave? I think that was good. A little too short. Uh, Guest, my next guest. <laughs> my next guest is a broadcasting legend, a good friend of the show. Uh, I'm just a, an all-round, you know. He's he's all right. <laughs> Larry King, everybody. Larry King. Hey, Larry. Thanks. Hey, listen, thanks for coming in tonight. It's I know it was kind of short notice, but, you know, you're mishpucha, and I wanted to be taught, you know, I wanted to mishpucha talk... Mishpucha means family. For those of you not from Beverly Hills. <laughs> Inside joke. These people are not from Beverly Hills? <laughs> Get out! No, you're Mishpuka, you know, we're family, and the terrible events in Boston today, I said, who, who can I get on, because I didn't want to talk about it, but I, but I didn't want to not talk about it. And I, I thought, who, who is the most uh, experienced newsman I know? And it's you, so that's why I wanted you to come in. Well, these are the toughest kind of days. It's uh, horrible. The best example I can give you, I've, I've worked so many of them, is 9-11. Right, of course. 9-11. That night was a horrific night, and I was here, and two weeks later I was at grounds, I was at Central, I was there in New York, I was brought with the firemen and the mayor, and when you go through a tragedy like this, you, you're, you're really caught up in it, you know? You're feeling the tragedy when you're anchoring something, and you're talking to so many people, and I'd be here and I'd be talking to the mayor of Boston tonight, and the... You know, the people involved in the federal government, FBI, and then you try to get people who, who are the witnesses on the street. You got to have compassion for the people who are victims. Sometimes you have victims. You're going all over the place. You're really a high energy. At the same time, you're feeling it. It's, it's tough, but it's what you live for. It's really insane. In a state. It's so frenetic. People are in your ear. Go to Boston. Go to here. Go to, mm -hmm. well, you got a guy in Washington. Go to him now. Go to him now. So you're caught up in being professional. At the same time, you're absorbed with the act. And then at the same time, all that's going through you, and you hate the... Pro like you said it earlier. You were brilliant earlier, by the way. Mm. These people are cowards. Yeah, he's not, you leave it's a, not bomb. a soldier. He's no. not a soldier. And I, another thing is, when you got floating news like this, when it's happening as it's happening, right. you get mistakes made. Sure, all the you time. Know, and they get, they made but they're speculating mistakes. all the time, and that's what makes me crazy. It's like do the, that. the greed like, for, for yeah, well, information. I want to be better than you. I want to be faster than you. So CBS right. wants to be NBC, NBC wants to be CNN, CNN wants to be Fox. And it becomes that becomes more important almost sometimes than the story. And I never let that get out of hand. I never liked guessing. You can't guess. So we don't know what this is yet. As we're right. now, Maybe we've learned something in between. But as we're taping this right now, we don't know anything oh, about Oh, thanks a lot, man. <laughs> what? Everyone was like, they're live. Now they're like, no. <laughs> People think you're here at 12... <laughs> By the way, uh, Rob Lowe is, you know, I'm on that 80s. You're in that 80s oh, thing? That yeah, because I remember, you know, I, uh, I remember at Save the Robots, you coming in one night. <laughs> <laughs> no, they you were the worst guy we ever had in there. Nah. 
<laughs> no, you know what I remember? One of my abiding memories of the 1980s is your uh, appearance in the movie Ghostbusters. That was, that's a great story. That's a good, it's a good okay. Is it a story? Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. It's well, a talk show. I've been in 23 movies. Right. That was my first movie. Really? My first ever. And they called me, and I was the first scene shot on the first day with Ivan Reitman was the director. We shot it at WR Studios, 1440 Broadway. They did my sh like my old radio show. I was taking calls, people saying they were seeing ghosts. I was hanging up on them. You know, like they're nuts. I was smoking then, so they had a big cigarette, a big ashtray. Anyway, it was, a, it was a fun day, so I get to do, I've never been in a movie. I got my local television show in Washington. I'm doing national radio show, and a limo picks me up at the airport. Limo, hey, I'm, hey. A, I'm an actor, right? Yeah. I get in the back of the limo, <clears throat> and I notice the limo driver is not wearing a black uniform with a black hat, but he's wearing like a pea coat, you know, and jeans. And he's like a tough looking guy, he's like 200 pounds. <coughs> Were you I attracted said, to this? No, I uh, said gentleman? no. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. You know, you're sick. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I, so I, I, I leaned up a little, you know, in the back of the limo, and I said, sir, uh, you don't look like a limo driver. He says, I, I'm, I'm a teamster. The team, they're a tough union. Yo, I say, you, you, did I say it against the Teamsters? No. Did he I? Said, no, Ever? You don't speak against No. Him. He says, uh, yeah, we got the contract. We do every movie in New York. In other words, if you do a movie in New York, the Teamsters drive the cars. We drive, we'll drive the Ghostbuster car in the movie when you see the long shot. We pick up all the actors in the movie. That's what we do. So I say, well, supposing... I'm making a movie in New York, and I don't want to use the Teamsters. What are you, high? Why the did guy, you say that to the guy? No. The guy turns around and goes, <laughs> 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 I, I knew, I interviewed Jimmy Hoffa, so I got to know the Teamsters. Oh, right, yeah, he yeah. was, uh, he was involved. Anyway, I got, this is a true story, I got $10,000 to do this one five-minute scene. But <laughs> me. Wait a second, wait a second. Three years later, that movie was sold on the same day Ghostbusters was sold to ABC and HBO, okay? On the same day, both bought the rights. ABC had it for a year, and then HBO had it in perpetuity. And if you had a speaking part, you got like 10 times what you were paid. Oh, are I you got a check kidding for $100, me? $100,000 for this the? one scene. And then, now I'll get checks for 47 cents. It'll show somewhere. <laughs> this is all these years later. It was fun doing them. Wow. Yeah. That, you must have made a great deal of money over the years. And then, of course, there's alimony. So, uh, there's... <laughs> Man. <laughs> Let me tell you, first of all, I never... I paid child support. Oh, well, yeah. And I paid Yeah, you did. Yeah, I paid <laughs> But it was all worth it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah all so right. Are you here to talk about Boston? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, the thing well, is, it, I want to talk about I, it. I, I don't want to talk about I it. I don't know if I were hosting a show like this. Yeah. How I would handle a night like this? It's hard. It's, uh, not, it's, it's not very easy. hard because yeah. I mean, Letterman did a great job. I remember yeah, that. after 9/11, when Dave came back, it's one of the he greatest moments in broadcasting history. Yeah. Are you sure we'll be on tonight? No, I'm not actually. I'm That's not. Right. Sure. If there, yeah, if there's breaking if news, news no, we won't late, be on. They won't be on. Yeah, yeah. If they get later news on it. Yeah, of course. And that's that's fine. I mean, yeah. God, it's not like we won't be back. Because how to handle you know? an entertainment show? But you handled it, I would say, extraordinarily well. Oh, thanks. I mean, the, the, what I, I try and do uh, is be honest. I think that... Uh, right. But be, I've seen you do this. You know, just, just tell the truth. If you don't know the answer... A lot of people, I think, when they're broadcast and they, they, they try and second-guess everything they They talk say. too much. They talk about themselves. Oh, I do. I, I've covered better. No, and, or they get the... They, they, know, they know too much. Yeah. Today in Boston... Well, I think a horrible day that will live in the hearts of infamy. Yeah, that... You come on and you say, this was a terrible day. We're going to talk to some people involved and some people who are talking about it and some people who are trying to find answers. My first guest is... Right, And the yeah. first question is, where were you and what happened? Well, I wasn't involved, man. I was no, here I'm in L.A. I'm I, I, I... <laughs> you know... What the hell, Larry? At yeah. best, that's insensitive, man. You know the problem when I come here? What? I have to bring my brain down. Ah, <laughs> knock it off. <laughs> we'll be right back with Larry King, everybody. Larry King.
Welcome back, everybody. I'm here with Larry King. He's in a documentary about the 80s or something. Yeah? Yeah, on PBS. Yeah. I haven't seen it, but Rob said it was really come out well. Yeah, no, it's it's good. Uh, do you have a big 80s? Did you... Uh, well, I, uh, 80s were big for me. I broke in and... I broke in CNN in 1980 oh, for June yeah, 1st of yeah. 1985. How are they doing right now, CNN? I since don't, I don't, I don't follow the ratings. But oh, no. you don't? I do. How are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> Well, they're making a lot of changes. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, let me tell I think you. Chris they're... Cuomo was. <laughs> Chris, Chris Cuomo was a great hire. Who's who? Chris Cuomo. Sure. Man, yeah, he's, look, uh, he's very good. Yeah, he's yeah. Host no, he's great. very good. It'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> he's very good. I, I never said he wasn't. Okay, well, well you said it facetiously. <laughs> you, you acted. I, I, the thing is, I wasn't. I'll just be honest with you. I wasn't really listening, because. <laughs> I was getting on to the next thing. <laughs> I was getting I, on to the next thing. I had a I great doing. time, uh, 25 and a half years, hey. Yeah, you, but you should still be doing it. So it's my, you know, look, America uh, trusts you and, and will listen to you. So I don't know why a broadcaster like CNN would go, well, uh, let's get rid of that and get uh, some... Uh, they, 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 that doesn't make sense to me. That doesn't make really sense get rid of me. They offered me a one-year extension. I used to get three or four-year extensions, and I took that as a writing on oh, the wall. Oh, really? So I took it well. What was I going to do? So you walked out on America, you son of a bitch. I didn't know that. I didn't walk out. Hey, I'm on the internet now. Oh, oh. You know, we have Hulu. Well, you're doing well. I didn't Hulu loves us. Yeah, Hulu. We are on Aura. We got our own. Hey, my You're, you're on Aura? Aura, Aura TV. Oh, uh, Aura. Okay. <laughs> Carlos Slim is my partner. Carlos Slim, the richest man in the world? Yes. Do you know he's the real uh, guy behind uh, the most interesting man in the world? Like yeah. the, I don't always drink beer, but when I do, oh, yes, I, uh, oh. Uh, oh, yeah. You want to know the truth about that guy? Yeah. I don't always drink beer. Yeah, that, but that, when that, I do, right? He's a 77-year-old Jewish man who goes to, de to, to the deli in Beverly Hills every other day. I don't always have a bagel, but when I do... <laughs> <laughs> Good follow-up, yeah. great line. You have Good lead in, yeah, boom. Yeah. Good lead. Yeah. So, what's going on in the baseball, Larry? You're a big ba baseball big fan. Big baseball. What's happening? Well, there's that movie out. You seen it? Oh, <coughs> Jackie. Oh, Robinson by the way, movie? please, C42. It did 28 million. It led the weekend. Yeah. It is a great film. <coughs> I knew Jackie Robinson. Did you really? Interviewed him twice. Wow. In fact, when I was 13 years old, I was up in the bleachers at Evers Field, and I was at his first game. No. So when they show it in the movie, you know, I almost think if they had a film, I'd see myself at 13. <laughs> but the movie, and, and Harrison Ford is, he's got to win the Academy Award. He's unbelievable. As he's a, he's a reasonably guy. good actor. I think he's going to go places. <laughs> he's 70 years old now. 70? Well, that means I'm 50. <laughs> I'm going to be 80. Well, hey. I can't. I'd believe. like to get to 82, so I, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I can't believe it. Oh, man, don't worry about it. It's no, just don't even don't worry about don't it. Don't worry about it. I mean, don't what, worry can about do, it. what can you do about it? It's easy to say, how old are you, 50? 50, yeah. So, yeah, you say, don't worry about it. No, when no, I was 50, oh, no. I'd say it too. I, I, it freaked me out when I turned 50. It freaked me yeah, out. Yeah, 50 was a bad Oh, it's, it's a tough 50, one. 50, 60 wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. 70 was okay. I'm not sure about how 80 is going to be. What, you, but 50, because they had a party for me. I was doing my, radio, my national radio show, and I was on... CNN. Yeah. And I was ready to go to CNN to be on at 9 o'clock. They gave a party for me at the restaurant. George Will hosted it, Bob Costas. I get into my car. I turn on the radio, and the first thing I hear is, over 50, join AARP. Oh. I swear. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I know, man. I, I hit know. the button on the car, and the next voice says, ride Metro if you're over 50. Oh. <laughs> 50 is a, it's, it's tough. You know, and they do that thing, they, they put the camera in your, you know, they put the camera, they have a look up, you know, they check you out. The camera, you know, they put the camera. What? In your pants. They put a camera in your pants. <laughs> what are you talking about? But they give you a colonoscopy, man. Oh, yeah, that. Well, you <laughs> and, and, and when I got mine, they didn't even throw a party. I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you the worst thing about colonoscopies, are, by the way, a and they're fine. They're, they're fine. nothing. Yeah. Never a joke. Yeah. You sit there. You well, I don't know if it's a joke. No, no. <laughs> you they're fine. You don't it's know. Like, oh, no. What do you think has ever no, happened? I, my last colonoscopy. I said, "When are you going to do it?" And they said, "We just did it." Oh, really? But the first one I had. Yeah. The first is when they sort of twilighted you, and you I go, I go. half awake. 
<laughs> so you're half awake, <clears throat> and the guy doing it is saying, this looks good, this looks good, this looks good, and then he pauses for like 30 <clears throat> seconds, and you go, what? What don't look good? You know? It's weird. I can't believe that I've reached a point in my life <laughs> where I'm on TV with Larry King talking about our colon Oscar. <laughs> All right, so the sum up of this is, the sum, <laughs> summing up the evening, watch the PBS special. Oh, yeah, you got to see that. Tragedy yeah. in Boston, stay on top of it, and let's hope that no more lives are lost. Yes, absolutely. That we find out the horrific person who do this. Uh, 42 is a great movie, yeah. and get a colonoscopy. <laughs> a Night with Craig Ferguson. What else? Yeah, that sounds a little more interesting than a night with Craig Ferguson, actually. I, I don't think it's that interesting now spending a night with I get to bed early, man. You know like, what I like about you? Uh, among many things I like about you. Yeah? Is you put your ego at the door. You really, for someone who's as talented as you are and has been successful, you do not have an enormous ego. I think I do, to be honest. But <laughs> No, no, to be fair, I, 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 and I am being quite serious, I think I do, but I think what I, I'm lucky because in the business that I'm in and uh, that we are in, you get to see a lot of people who do not restrain their egos. I always left mine at the door. Well, I, you got to have a healthy ego to go on camera. Right, right. But what I'm saying is, I've seen what an ego looks like unrestrained when it's you know walking around being Look thinking me, it's yeah. yeah you know. And I have to say, it, it's not it's not attractive. No, it's not. It's not an attractive look when people are you know think they're awesome. So when you know you're not awesome, it helps you. <laughs> no, we don't know. It's an, <laughs> an ego is you know you're awesome, but you restrain it. If you're restraining something that you don't think you have, you're not restraining anything. You follow? You no, know, let's put it this way. It's, uh, it's right, about it's, uh, run it by me again. Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason. Right. Told me once. I told him, when you worked at CBS, you like, do uh, you own the network? He says, look at it this way. If you think you have clout, you have clout. If you think you don't have clout, even if you have clout, you don't have clout. That's me. <laughs> so you I think don't think I have clout, and I don't. <laughs> so you don't think you're awesome. So you're not reducing any ego. You, in other words, you don't have an inferiority complex. You are inferior. It's yes. It's not and, a complex. Yes. It's and, not a complex. Yes, and here's the thing as well. I, I think I have a sense of perspective, which is this. What I do, Larry, is talk. I know, it's a joke. It's not, Crazy. it's not that big a deal. I'm not looking up someone's ass with a camera, you know. What? I'm not, I'm not doing a, it's not like a proper job, Larry. Yeah, but when you get your paycheck, do you say, whoa, they're paying me to, to talk? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Bit. Yeah, yeah. You and I are sitting here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're paying you. We do this anyway. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Meet me today and have a bagel. Yeah, of course. So, I don't always have a bagel, but when I do, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're out of time, Larry. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, when do you nice. want me to get short notice with everything? Yeah, no, listen, I, if hey, it were up to me, just, just, just come on over. Uh, whenever you can make it. You know, You're just, kidding. Just, yeah, come on over when you can make it. <laughs> so, in other words, if I'm driving by Fairfax here... Yeah, come on in. I go see a movie over here. What, what, what kind of movie are we talking about? 42. It's a great movie. Oh, well, you've All seen right. that movie. You can't go see that movie. You're going to go, go see, see it again? What, you, is it like Twilight or something to you? You're gonna, like... <laughs> no, but I want to know. I could just drop in here. Yeah, yeah, come on in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I might you surprise know... surprise you one night. You wouldn't get ticked, huh? No. No? No. no I'd be like, come on up. Anytime. I'm not kidding. I'll say, let's say you're talking to Will Smith. <coughs> <laughs> He's not coming here, man. I just saw him Saturday night. I oh, you did? I could have booked did he, did he say anything about me? <laughs> we was like that. He's, Ferguson, a, he's, a, he's a good guy. Yeah, he has. No, I met him before. Okay. He was so like, hey, what so are you let's doing say here? You had, yeah. Let's say you had Will Smith on. Right. And I'm driving by. Yeah. Uh, go walk on. And I just sit in the seat and yeah. just start asking him questions. Yeah. What would you do? Uh, I'll let you. That means you have a healthy ego and complete faith in yourself. Uh, and faith in you. Faith in me. Yeah. But you wouldn't be angry at me. I'm angry at you now, but you can't tell. Larry King, everybody.
If you're going to be in the L.A. area and would like to attend a taping of The Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, please give us a call at 323-570-0059. You know, it's been a tough day for a lot of people. Um, uh, so if you're watching from Boston tonight, our thoughts are with you. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Good luck to you. Good night.